Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to show you how to make this rocker card with the penny slider. So I've actually just not long made this during a craft along on the Craft Stash Facebook page. And you've got the puffer fish there that will move and then the card also rocks. And then it will eventually stop and then it will just be displayed. You can move the fish along if you need to balance it. But it's a really fun card. You've got space on the back there to be, able to, write, to be able to write your message. And you can see you've got your stopper there, but it will all fit into an envelope. I've actually made one not too long ago. This is another one here. So this is a circle penny slider. So you can see the B moves around this one. I think it's got a little bit squashed, but you can see, and it moves actually really nicely when this one rocks. You can see, if I get it going, there we go. You should just be able to make out the, uh, the butterfly moving there. So this one's already on my channel. I'll link this one if you want to do a circular version. But for anybody that's got my kit, with this lovely underwater theme, I'm gonna show you how to make this one. And it's the same stamps and dies that I used to make this one, which I shared earlier on my channel and I'll link that as well. So let's get on with the tutorial and I'll show you how to make this one. So this is the kit, it comes in a bigger box and you get your ink cubes, which I've got here. And you get all bits and pieces, which I kind of squashed down into the envelopes. So we've got the water droplets, which I'll be using. And then we've got our dies. So I've used this one, you get two penny slider styles you get the wave or the straight one i found the straight one would be better for this rocker because you could use that one but i think it's gonna you have to really kind of move it to get it to go up and then obviously when it comes down it has to kind of go up again whereas this one it's just got to move left to right so i'm going to go with that one again and you've got your dies to cut out all your different stamps here so you've got the submarine stingray puffer fish there angel fish the crab and so on so I've already stamped and coloured all of them. You also want that disc because that's for your little penny slider. It's called the penny slider because you can use a real coin. I don't tend to use the coins. I did use it during the live, but it was too heavy. I just find it's just a bit too much for the card. So I just like to use the cardstock. And we'll talk about that in a moment. I've got all my scraps here. There's also free downloads that you can find. The link for that is on page six of the booklet that comes with your kit. Okay, so first of all, I've already gone ahead and cut everything. I'll link the Facebook Live as well if you do want to go back. You know, you might want to watch that. That's exactly two hours long and I go through everything in a lot more detail and I cut everything from scratch. But for the YouTube videos, I like to have it all ready. So I'm using the Circle Cutter here. This is the X-Cut brand, but there's many of these now. Many companies have got their own. And I've just popped it on the six and a half marker. Okay, now you might want to use your nested dies you might have a plate or something you want to draw around but you want something that's near the six and a half and you want to do that three times now i've done two in the white one for the front one for the back and then i've gone ahead and i've done just partially some in the blue here because i've decided i wanted to have a colored piece on the back so then i can do a matte layer to write and stamp my message so i've got this blue piece here so just cut you know a little over half of a six and a half diameter circle or all of it and then just snip it away which is what I did in the live but what you then want to do with this piece is we're going to trim it this was my original one but I want to change the color so this is yeah to three and a half so I'm going to lay down the circle if yours is a full circle just bring it so that one of the edges here hits the three and a half marker like so and then I'm just going to trim that down and then I'm going to pop it in my scoreboard here and make sure this outer side lines up nice and straight with one of the tracks on your scoreboard and then score at three. And that gives you a half inch tab. OK, and then what I'm going to do is use this piece so I'm not wasting anything. But what I would suggest is just cut a six inch circle and then cut it in half and probably a little bit more off so you can get a nice section to go in here so I'm probably actually going to have to trim this a little bit so I'm just going to bring this down I'm actually going to do five and three quarters and I'm just going to sit this on here roughly in the middle just so I can get it a bit smaller and then I'm going to sit it in this section and then I'm just going to mark with a pencil it should come up a bit more there there we go 
just below the score line. And just line up those pencil marks. So I'm bringing it up to two and a half depth, just about. And now that will sit perfectly in there, which I'll stick down in a minute. So I want to stamp, stamp a sentiment in there, but that's my space now to write a message. Rather, I mean, you could just keep it white, but I just, you know, it just gives it a little bit more. So you'll have all these pieces. You've got your stand. Then this little piece here is three by one. Along the three inch side, you want to score at half an inch, one and a half and two and a half. OK, and then you're just going to fold and burnish. So it's that shape. OK, so it's like an M shape. That's going to go with the stand. We'll use that later on. So you'll have these two and then you need a pattern piece, which is six inch diameter. So you would have done these at six and a half. Just bring this down to six. So like I said, whether you're using nesting dies, you'll just want to drop down to the next smallest size or um you know a plate or whatever it is you're you're drawing around but that's now going to go on here and again i've just snipped off the top so just lay your whole circle down on this piece you'll you'll have the rest of yours here when you've got a nice equal frame it's run in the center mark a pencil mark that's in line with this piece this white piece and just snip it off okay but in the live i stuck that straight on there and then Basically, we, we keep the negative piece and you just drop that back inside the card. But I had it stuck onto the 300 GSM card, which I'm using here, and it created a bit too much bulk. And this was not moving as smooth as I would like. So I'm going to grab my penny slider and I want this near the top. In fact, you may want to lay it down on top of this whilst it's here, just so you can get your proportions. Now, bearing in mind, you're going to have... I'll just pretend this is the top bit. I'll give you the measurements for that in a minute. You're going to have the top of the bowl there. So let's have that. I'm going to go for it about there. Now you want to make sure this is nice and straight, but I'm now just going to run that through the dye machine, not on the white piece, just the paper on its own. But keep the negative space. Don't throw anything away. OK, so now I've just got the paper and that's all I want. That's nice and thin, so it's not going to create any bulk behind. Now I can stick this onto here and then I'm just going to run it through again and just pop that die back into this space so you know that you'll cut it perfectly. So I'm just going to use some liquid glue to stick that in place. You might be using a patterned cardstock, so you won't need to do any of this, but it just means that you don't have the bulk from the cardstock. So I'm just going to wiggle that around until I've got it where I need it and then I can just pop the die back in there and now just run that through my die machine and you don't need to keep the white piece you can discard that okay so that's all cut through nicely next you want to cut yourself three of these discs now I did say four during the live but I actually think you only need one on the back and again it's just less bulk for the penny slider to move freely but I'm going to stick two together this is the two together are going to go on the front and you're going to attach your image onto these so this is nice and strong but the single one is just going to go behind here now I've got some foam dots here but these are actually a bit too big so I'm just going to snip some of the the negative space there and just use this little piece of foam and just take the backing off and I'm going to stick that onto the disc with just the, the one piece. And then I'm going to pop it behind here. And then the one with the two, you just want to line up over the top. Now you can use, you can have these as acetate. This is what I've done here. So if this, the image that you're sticking on top, maybe you'll see some of the white disc. If you use acetate, because you can just slightly see it underneath the butterfly. So it just depends. I mean, that's very, very light. But because of the images that I'm going to be sticking on this, they, they cover all of that white disc, so it doesn't matter. But now you'll see you've got your slider. Now, if it does stick at all, with a lot of the dies, you might get a little bit of a rough edge. Just get something to just go around and just kind of smooth all of that piece. And another little tip, I like to just get, I've got a little hole in my little anti-static bag here so I just tip out some of the powder and with a paintbrush just go in and rub it around the sides of the foam and it will just take away any of the stickiness that may be there 
Okay, so that's moving nicely. Next, we want to attach this onto this piece and then we're gonna slide that under. Now you wanna use a foam that's nice and thick. So this is, what have I got here? This is one, two, it's about two to three mil. I made the mistake during the live of using one of my older, thinner ones and you don't, you, it was too thin. You need this to be able to move freely against this piece. So I'm probably gonna use double the thickness of this as well. And I'm gonna run a strip along here. You wanna make sure that nothing gets too close to this. This needs to be able to move, you know, nicely on its own. So I'm just gonna run three strips there. And you can see, you want the foam to be thicker than this, you know, or taller than this piece. So I actually think those are gonna be fine, just those three, I don't think I need to double this. This is much, much thicker than what I used before. So just make sure whatever it is, is thicker, you know, higher than this piece. And if it's not, just double it up. So I'm just gonna pop, again, just make sure you pop your tape down when that's at each end so you can definitely you know check it's not going to stick against it then you just want to lay it down over the top like so and now see that still moves nicely in the middle there and then with this piece i'm going to use my liquid glue just a thin thin amount of glue Make sure none's going to go over the edge. If it's got a design, try to make sure that you get your design lined up. So mine needs to be that way. So I'm just going to pop it in here and slide it underneath this. And then I can just drag it down until it fits into place. And just go in there with something that you can just go around just to make sure it's all in place. And if you do think there's any glue in there, again, just use your powder buddy there. You can just take away any stickiness that there might be. I don't think I have got any, but just to be on the safe side. Okay, then if you get your stand in place, because then it just helps when you come to decorate. So this one here, I'm just going to burnish my score line. And again, I'm going to use my liquid glue all the way along the tab. And then you just want to lie, line up the bottom here and then just lay it down so that it meets the bottom of the circle and make sure that this, like this score line, runs parallel with that line at the top and then you'll know you've got it in straight. And if you again you use the liquid glue, you've got a little bit of wiggle time there. But I'm happy with that, that looks good enough. Okay, and now you can see when I stamp something on there, that's going to go on the back. It just looks much, much neater. It's always the way when I do the lives, I always make changes or think of something, you know, that I wished I'd done, which is why I do always kind of recommend watching the YouTube afterwards because it kind of gives you, <laughs> it takes out all of those mistakes, basically. The lives are fun because, it's you know, I'd show a lot of the time of changing something and then how I rectified it. So it's quite good in that sense. And then you just want to add glue to the tabs on those two ends and you're going to stick one down so that you want them both facing the bottom and then fold that one over just make sure it's in the middle there and then just close the card okay so while that's drying i've cut myself a piece of five and a half by one and i'm just going to round off the corners with my corner punch you don't have to do this but it's just kind of all the nice rounded edges work well with this style and then this is going to go along the top there and you see you start to get your fishbowl look but before I do that I want to stamp my sentiment I'm going to stamp one on the back piece there as well so I think let's do it a little bit different so on that one I've got have a fantastic day because that fits really nicely in there so I think this one I might do it's officially your special day and then on the back, have sending birthday fishes. So let's take that one out and that one out. And do this one first. So I'm just gonna lay my sentiment down in the middle there. Okay, 
Okay, so they're stamped and then I've got my foam strips here and I'm going to pop one of them just along the top there. Take the backing off. And then I just want to pop just the, a little bit of the base there just along the top. So you have more of it overhanging. And again, you just want to keep everything nice and parallel with the, the slider here. Like so, there we go. You can see it's nice and neat on the back there as well. And then I'm gonna stick that one down in a minute because I've already got a little mark on it. I think I need to give my desk a really good scrub. Okay, now we can decorate. So I've already gone ahead and stamped and cut. I had a lot of this ready for the live. I've got the submarine here and I've actually used some of the water droplets here on the windows. So I may well this time, I think, have the submarine as the spinning part. And then I've got the, if I just show you in the kit here, you get your dice. You've got your dice to cut out the main big images. And then I've used for the for the jellyfish there, I've used holographic cardstock. You do get a really lovely iridescent card in the kit, but I've used it all. There's the treasure chest. And then you've got the gold coins and the gems there, which I've already cut in different colours. You've got green, red silver and then I've done the gold coins you've got your anchor which is here so I've got that ready to go and then again I've just stamped all these different images and colored them using my alcohol markers so for the actual slider if you feel you want to have more of a weight then you would put a coin here you'd actually have coins on each side instead of the white discs a penny you know depending on where you are in the world well, you could sit one on top of this, but I'm not going to because I just prefer it. Plus, it's a bit lighter if you're going to be posting. But I'm now just going to stick that on there. And there is weight on this because of the gems. So that will probably be enough, actually, for this to move. And it's going to go upside down and all that kind of, you know, fun stuff. So that's in place. So get that down because then you know how much space you've got to build up everything else. And you can see where I've kind of gone with everything here. Now I'm also going to add the sand. So in the kit, you get lots of cardstock, you get pattern papers. Like I said, you get the free downloads as well. This is some of the sand color here. So I'm just going to cut, again, using my circle cutter and the six inch size, because that is your circle for the inside. Basically, you just want the bottom part. And then in the kit, you get this stencil really really fun you've got wave effect on the sides you've also got the seabed so the one that's not as wavy I guess I'm going to do let's have a little bit more this time so I'm going to go about there and then just draw around it and then just cut that piece out okay And then that will sit in the bottom here. But before I stick it down, I've got my little distress tool. This is a Dovecraft distress tool. And you just, in between the petals are, are blades. Some are kind of deeper than others. Yeah, I think they're, yeah, they're just slightly, ever so slightly different. So you get more of a deeper effect. So you can get different effects. But I'm just, because this is a white core card, brings through that white colour but then with the cube here the ink cube I'm going to use the the brown one and then you can just distress the ends and because you've exposed that white core it just absorbs the colour just soaks it right up Make a little bit more there as well If you want to get it even more intense, you can just take your cube straight to your cardstock there. But now you see you get a really cool effect. So when we pop that down, I'm going to pop it on some foam so it's lifted so we can tuck things behind. And then just sit that one. I mean, you could have it coming up to the side there. You can have it wherever you want. I'm going to keep it at the bottom. You're just following the curve of the pattern paper. Like so. Now, also, what I didn't do on this one is here. I mean, I can still I can still do a little bit, actually. If you just sit your stencil over the top here, let's grab my blue ink. 
And then you can just brush it. Try not to go near the white um, edge of the card. But it does give a really nice effect. There we go. And then we'll just move that back there. Let's come up here a bit higher. So yeah, do this before, but you can still see, you can do it after as well, but just get, just be careful when you get to the edge there. Okay, and then I've also got the stamp here, which has got the school of fish there. So I'm just going to ink that up. And this just helps create that background and we'll have these just there. There we go. Okay. And now we can start adding everything else. So I've got the anchor. I've got the treasure and I'll start building up all of the, the jewels on it. I'm going to cut quite a chunk off there just so it really kind of sits down in the sand. And then I've got all the seaweed so I can start building that up again I like to cut them down so some are a bit shorter than others there's some in front of the other there so it looks like it's really got lost in amongst the seaweed you could also trim you know some of the characters but make sure nothing really interferes with this area here you need that to be able to move nice and freely we've got the crab we've got to have him down here and I'm going to have all the jewelry, all the jewels, all the jewelry, all the jewels down there. I've got three jellyfish. I'm going to have, and so I have one up there, one there, and then one down there. Again, just take some away and get more of the fish in. You could maybe be, a, you can be swimming in amongst the seaweed there. And I'm just going to start getting everything stuck down. So I'm going to pop it on high speed and get the card finished. stuck in place and then I'm just going to add some of my little water drops here so use your liquid glue it will go on white but once that dries it will go completely clear and you can see they've all gone nice and clear there so don't worry if they go on white to start with and I'm just going to add let's do let's do a couple up here it doesn't take long to dry at all um, again, you don't want them interfering too much with your submarine or whatever it is you've got there. So let's do one over here, actually. Just like so. And then maybe do one there. And I might just do one there. It might just touch the, the submarine a bit. It's always going to go different ways, but... It just adds a nice bit of dimension there to the card. And then I've got a couple of other bits I want to do. So I'm going to add some little googly eyes. Oh, actually, well, the glossy accents is a glue as well. So it doesn't matter if you do use that to um, adhere things. But I've got here some googly eyes. You can pick these up in the kids craft sections in any kind of craft department. They pretty much all stock it in the pound shop, places like that. And then I can just pop. <laughs> Always makes me smile when we add. If I just show you there, you can see little eyes move. 
So there's a lot of movement on this card. So that might take a little bit longer to dry, but you get the idea. And then also with the glossy accents, I'm just going, I mean, you could cover the whole, well, let's do a, I always say this and then I do it, don't I? Let's cover a couple of the fish completely. I just usually squeeze out a little bit and then I move that around. And if it's a bit cloudy, that's just because it's a bit thick. If it again will dry clear, but the glossy accents gives your images exactly that a glossy accent. It just looks really nice for anything that's under the water. I mean, I did talk about turning this into a shaker card. You could quite easily put um, another piece of acetate over the top so it would look like they're actually in the bowl. But I quite like that actually. Yeah, we'll do that and let's do. Let's do, well, I'm going to have to do all of them now, aren't I? So let's do this one here. Okay, so you can see the lovely shine you get with them. They do need to dry, so I'm not going to move it too much, but my submarine will move around there. You can see it moves really freely up and down, and I just need to stick that on the back. So I'll do that once it's all dry. I'll pop it up just briefly, just for the purposes of the video, but I don't want the glossy accents to drip although it's not too thick so it should be okay but there you have your rocker penny slider cards and there's this one here as well that I showed which uses the stamp set so again if you want to make this kind of style you can and that'll be linked in the video so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial showing you how to make these fun cards you can use any stamps you want any theme you want it's a really fun interactive card for all ages thanks for watching I'll link everything as always check out the tutorials that are popping up now because it might be something you want to watch if you haven't subscribed and you've enjoyed today please hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell and then you'll be notified every time I upload a new tutorial thanks for watching and I'll be back again very soon bye